Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting session on Selenium interview questions by Edureka. This is Vaishnavi and I'll be discussing the top 50 Selenium interview questions that will be helpful for freshers as well as experienced professionals. So without wasting much time, let's get straight to the module. First, let's see what are the latest Selenium job trends across the globe. The very first question you would ask yourself before going to an interview is why this domain? Why not the others? So let's see why you should choose Selenium as your career option. So I would also like to put upon this point that there are roughly 16,955 available jobs in test automation engineering on the job portals. 30,000 jobs available on Glassdoor and many more. These numbers actually indicate a high demand for this skill and consequently high job security. Also do note that as an automation tester, you'll always be needed and will find no lack in leading companies trying their hardest to recruit you. There is enormous amount of opportunities out for you guys. That's it about the job trends. Now let's take a look at the job opportunities in this domain. The scope of job opportunities in Selenium testing is very high for skilled professionals. They are prevalent all over the world. Test automation has gone through so many changes over past 10 years. Selenium being the best software testing tool, its demand is at the peak right now. It is also considered as a web standard automation tool because it is supported by almost every available browser like Firefox, Chrome and many more. There are a lot of job roles starting from the text executor, test designer, senior tester, test manager and many more. Selenium automation tester, Selenium analyst, automation Selenium test lead. To name a few of these are some reputed job profiles that are offered to the candidates. I hope you guys are clear with the job trends and the job opportunities in this field. Now I'll be discussing the top 50 Selenium interview questions that are most frequently asked. So let's see what's on the list guys. The first question I have for you guys is what is Selenium and what are its different components? They might not ask what is Selenium because you're interviewing for the profile called automation tester which requires Selenium as a must known skill. Okay, so the answer to this would be Selenium is one of the most popular automated testing suits. It is designed in a way to automate the functional aspects of a web application and a wide range of browsers and platforms. Due to its existence in the open source community, it has become one of the most accepted testing tools among the professionals. Do make this a note guys. Selenium is not just a single tool or a utility, rather a package of several testing tools for the same reason. That's why it is referred as a suit. Selenium is a test suit, right? So each of these tools is designed in a way to cater different requirements. So the suit package consists of Selenium ID that is Selenium integrated development environment Selenium RC that is Selenium remote control Selenium web driver and Selenium grid. Now let's understand them in detail. Selenium ID is a record and a playback tool. It is distributed as a Firefox plugin. So it doesn't work on Chrome or any other browser Selenium RC. Selenium RC is a server that allows the user to create test scripts in the desired programming language. It also allows executing the test scripts within the large spectrum of browsers. But RC is deprecated guys. Majority of the companies don't use RC. So RC was replaced by Selenium WebDriver. What is Selenium WebDriver? Selenium WebDriver is a different tool altogether which has various advantages over RC. This web driver directly communicates with the browser and uses its native compatibility to automate the task. Now, what is Selenium Grid? Selenium Grid is used to distribute the test execution on multiple platforms and environment concurrently. That means it supports cross browsing. Now let's move on to the next question. What is a Selenium Framework? It is a structure for making the code maintenance simpler and the readability look better. This framework involves breaking the entire code into different pieces of code which tests a particular functionality. It can also be structured in a way wherein the test cases which needs to be executed are invoked from an external application. Then what are the different types of framework available in Selenium? There are basically three types of framework available in Selenium that is data driven, keyword driven and hybrid. Now let's understand them in detail. 
Data driven framework in Selenium is the technique of separating the data set from the actual test case. This framework completely depends on the input test data. Now let's talk about keyword driven framework. This is a technique in which all operations and instructions to be performed are written separately from the actual test case. The similarity between this and the data driven framework is that the operations to be performed is again stored in an external file like an Excel sheet and so on. Now let's move on to our next question. What are the challenges and limitations of Selenium WebDriver? As Selenium WebDriver is widely used, the interviewer would be curious to know if you know the limitations of it too. So the challenges are it is difficult to test image based application. Selenium needs outside support for report generation activity. It is dependent on TestNG or Jenkins. It cannot perform tests on web services like SOAP or REST. Now, what are the limitations of Selenium WebDriver? It cannot test web applications. Handling pop ups is a little too difficult. It cannot test mobile applications. It supports limited reporting and it cannot actually support dynamic content. Okay, now let's move on to our next question. What are the drawbacks of Selenium RC? Like I mentioned earlier, Selenium RC is deprecated, so you cannot use RC alone. Why is it so? It is because server connection is required before executing the test script. And Selenium RC's architecture is more complicated and the APIs are less object oriented. So it is slow when it is used as a JavaScript program. So that's why we don't use Selenium RC. Explain how Selenium Grid works. Selenium Grid is a part of Selenium Suite that specializes in running multiple tests across different browsers operating systems. Now let's move to the next question. Mention what are the capabilities of Selenium WebDriver or Selenium 2.0? WebDriver should be used when you require improvement support for handling multiple frames, pop ups, multiple browser windows, and alerts. It also helps in page navigation, and drag and drop feature is also available. It also supports Ajax based UI elements. Multi browser testing includes improved functionality for browser, which are not well supported by Selenium 1.0. Next, we have list out the different test types that are supported by Selenium. For web based application testing, Selenium WebDriver can be used. So, the different test types that can be supported by Selenium are functional testing and regression testing. For post release validation with continuous integration, Selenium could be used with Jenkins, Hudson, Quick Build, and CruiseCont. Another important question which the interview would ask. Mention why to choose Python over Java in Selenium. So it's very obvious, guys. We use Java in order to write test scripts in Selenium, but why not prefer Python? So the few points that favor Python over Java to work with Selenium is Java programs tend to run slower compared to Python programs. Java uses traditional braces to start and end blocks, while Python uses indentation. Java also employs a static typing while Python is dynamically typed. Python is simple and more compact compared to Java. So Python has a lot of advantages over Java. So you can choose Python over Java. Now the next question is what is Selenese and what are the different types of Selenese available? I think most of you don't know what is Selenese. Selenese is a Selenium set of command which is used for running the test cases. There are three types of Selenese available in Selenium. They are actions, assertions, and accessors. Actions are used to perform operations and it interacts with the target element. Assertions are used as a checkpoint. Accessors are used for storing the values in a particular variable. Now, how to build an object repository in Selenium? An object repository is a common storage collection for all objects. In Selenium WebDriver, objects would typically be the locators used to uniquely identify the web elements. But also note that Selenium WebDriver does not offer an inbuilt object repository by default. However, the object repositories can be built using the key value pair approach, wherein the key refers to the name given to the object and value refers to the properties used to uniquely identify an object within the web page. Now let's talk about the different wait statements in Selenium. Exception appears when there is a loading time when you are interacting with an element on the web page. 
to overcome this issue we need to use the weight commands there are basically two types of weights they are implicit weight and explicit weight implicit weight tells the web driver to wait for a certain amount of time before it throws an exception so the example to this would be driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicit weight specify the time and the unit of time and talking about explicit weights they are confined to a particular web element this explicit weight is a code that you define to wait for a certain condition to occur before proceeding further into the code even explicit weight are of two types that is web driver weight and fluent weight the example to this would be web driver weight create an object of it and then instantiate it with the new web driver weight and provide the web driver reference and the time now another important question would be why do you use selenium ide what is the importance of selenium ide selenium ide is the simplest and the easiest of all the tools within the selenium package or suite of tools its record and playback feature makes it exceptionally easy to learn with minimal acquaintances to any programming language this selenium ide is an ideal tool for any user what are locators in selenium locators are defined as an address that identifies a web element uniquely within the web page it is a command that tells the selenium ide that it has to locate the gui elements like text box check boxes and so on and another important question would be what are the types of locators in selenium to identify the web elements accurately and more precisely we have different types of locators in selenium so there is a diverse range of web elements like the text box id radio button etc so it requires an effective and accurate approach to identify these elements we have id locator name link text partial link text css selector and xpath the most popular way to identify the web elements is to use the id it is the safest and the fastest locator options and should always be the first choice even when there are multiple options now talking about link text you can identify the hyperlink on a web page using link text it can be determined with the help of an anchor tag so in order to create a hyperlink on a web page you can use anchor text followed by the link text and talking about partial link text in some situation you may need to find links by the portion of the text in the link text element in such situations you can make use of this partial link text to locate elements talking about css selector it is mainly used to provide style rules for the web pages and you can identify one or more elements in the web page all you need to do when you are locating an element using css selector is you can locate it using the id or class id just have to be located with the help of a hash and a class can be located using a dot operator okay now let's talk about xpath it is a language to query xml documents it is an important strategy to locate an element in selenium xpath is an expression along with some conditions so here you can easily write an xpath script or a query to locate an element on the web page now let's move on to our next question how to use find element and find elements in selenium so when we have locators how can you find that element find element is used to find the first element in the current web page matching to the specified locator value do note that the only first matching element would be fetched so the syntax would be web element create an object of the web element driver dot find elements by specify the locator and the location whereas find elements is used to find all the elements in the current web page matching to the specified locator value do note that all the matching elements would be fetched and stored in the list of web elements okay another important question here how to select the size of the browser window you can perform actions like maximizing the window get the actual size resize the window and so on so in order to maximize i would use the command driver.manage.window.maximize and in order to get the actual size of the window browser i would use the command window.getsize so it gets the actual size of the window and you can also set the size of the browser window by using this command driver.manage.window.setsize and you can set the size according to your specification in this field now in order to resize the window i would use the command javascript executor link it to the driver and execute script 
and window resize to specifying the X and the Y axis. So this is how you select the size of the browser window. Now how to work with Excel files in Selenium. Have you ever worked with Excel files when you're testing an application in Selenium? Let's take a look. So in order to work with Excel files in Selenium, you can use JXL and Apache POI. Now what is JXL? JXL is Java Excel API. So this allows the user to read, write, create and modify the sheets in an Excel workbook at the runtime. Now talking about Apache, Apache POI is a popular API that allows the programmers to create, modify and display MS Office files using Java programs. It is an open source library developed and distributed by Apache Software Foundation. So we use these two APIs in order to work with Excel files in Selenium. What is a JavaScript executor or how do you scroll in Selenium? JavaScript executor is an interface that helps to execute the JavaScript through Selenium web driver. It has two methods namely execute script and execute async script. It is also used when Selenium web driver fails to click on any element. You can also scroll down a page using this JavaScript executor. You just have to specify the axis in which you want to scroll. It can either be X axis or Y axis. Now what is a page factory? Ever heard of this guys? So the interviewer would be interested to know if you know the implementation or the internal structure of how Selenium works. So he would ask what is POM and what are its advantages? POM is page object model, which is a design pattern in test automation in order to create an object repository for web UI based elements. The advantages of this page object model are it makes automation framework friendly, more durable and comprehensive. It keeps the test and the element locators separately. The repository is independent of any automation test. It helps in reusing the page object methods. POM is best applicable for the applications which contain multiple pages. Easier to write because it uses the business domain language. Okay, so this is about the page object model. Now let's talk about page factory. Okay, page factory is an inbuilt page object model pattern used to initialize web elements which are defined in page objects. Now you might want to know the difference between the page object model and the page factory because both are design patterns. Okay. Page object model is a class which represents the web page and holds all the functionalities. Whereas page factory is a way to initialize the web elements within the page object when the instance is created. Now let's see how to handle mouse and keyboard actions in Selenium. So in order to handle mouse and keyboard actions, we use something called actions class. So this actions class has an inbuilt ability to handle various types of keyboard and mouse events. So in Selenium web driver these events include operations such as drag and drop clicking on multiple elements with help of control key and many more. Now let's understand what exactly happens in this actions class. So this actions class is the user facing API for emulating complex action events. You can directly use this class rather than using input devices like keyboard and mouse. So the syntax would be actions create an object of this actions and instantiate it with the driver. And if you want to move a particular element to another location, you can just use the object of the actions class that is action dot move to element specify the element click and perform. So we'll use the perform method here in order to execute the actions using this actions API keyboard interactions can be easily handled by the web driver. So in order to use the mouse actions, I will use the current location of the web element and then perform some kind of operations like click double click drag and drop and so on. Can Selenium handle window based pop ups? If yes, how and if no, why? Selenium is an automation testing tool which supports only web application testing. Therefore, window pop ups cannot be handled using Selenium. Although WebDriver offers the users a very efficient way to handle these pop ups using alert interface. So there are basically four methods that we would be using along the alert interface. So that is void dismiss void accept string get text and void send keys. Now what is void dismiss? This method clicks on the cancel button as soon as the pop up window appears. And what about void accept? This method clicks on the OK button as soon as the pop up window appears. 
string get text this method returns the text displayed on the alert box void send keys this method enters the specified string pattern into the alert box okay if in case you want to close a particular window pop-up we just spoke about the alerts now if you just want to cancel out the window pop-up how do you do that using selenium we'll be using something called a robot class now what is this robot class and what does it do a robot class in selenium is used to generate native system input events for test automation self-running demos and other application where you need control over the mouse and keyboard webdriver cannot handle os pop-ups so in java 1.3 this robot class was introduced so in simple terms i would say this class provides control over mouse and keyboard devices so this is almost similar to actions class, but just that robot class has a lot of importance compared to the actions class. This robot class helps in uploading a file. It can simulate the mouse and the keyboard functions and it can handle pop ups as well. So this robot class has many methods to implement the keyboard functions. That is key press key release mouse move mouse press and mouse release. OK, so we'll talk about them in detail. Key press is a method which is called when you want to press any key. Key release is a method which is used to release a pressed key on the keyboard. Now let's talk about the mouse functions. Mouse move. This method is called when you want to move the mouse pointer in the X and Y coordinates. And talking about mouse press, this is used to press the left button of the mouse. And mouse release. This method helps in releasing the pressed button of the mouse. Now next we have how to achieve synchronization in WebDriver. Synchronization is a mechanism which involves more than one component to work in parallel with each other. It can be achieved by using two types, namely conditional and non-conditional. Unconditional. In this, we just specify the timeout value. We'll make the tool to wait until certain time and then proceed further. Now, what about conditional? It specifies a condition along with the timeout value. So the tool waits in order to check for the condition and then it comes out of it if nothing happens. So this is how you achieve synchronization in WebDriver. Now let's move on to another important question. How to take a screenshot in Selenium? Selenium has an interface by the name takes screenshot, which we can use in order to get a screenshot. OK, so the syntax goes something like this. It says take screenshot, link it to the driver and get screenshot as and the output type would be file. So what is this get screenshot as method? So this method will help in capturing the entire screenshot in the form of a file and makes use of the file utils class using which we can copy the screenshot from one location to another. So by using this file utils class, you can just copy the source file. So you can just copy the source file and place it in a new folder and provide a name to this folder and do note that it should end with .png specifying it to be an image. Okay. So this is how you take a screenshot in Selenium guys. Now let's move on and understand how to handle multiple windows in Selenium. So in order to work with multiple windows, we use a window handle. What is a window handle? A window handle is a unique identifier that holds the address of all the windows. So this is basically a pointer to a window which returns a string value. This window handle function helps in getting the handles of all the windows that are present. It is also guaranteed that each browser will have a unique window handle. So we use different methods called get window handle, get window handles, set, switch to, and action. So in order to switch from one window to another window, we use the switch to command. Let's understand them in detail. So this get dot window handle function helps in getting the window handle of the current window, whereas get dot window handles helps in getting the handles of all the windows that are opened. Set this method helps in setting the window handle, which is in the form of a string. OK, and uh, talking about switch to this helps in switching between the windows action. I think you guys are clear with actions now, so you might be able to answer this. It helps in performing certain actions on the windows like keyboard and mouse handle function. So that's how you work with multiple windows in Selenium. You can also refer our blog or uh, video which is put up how to handle multiple windows in Selenium. Now the next question is what are listeners in Selenium WebDriver? In Selenium WebDriver, listeners listen to the particular event defined in the Selenium script and it behaves accordingly. It allows customizing of the test engine reports or logs. 
there are mainly two listeners that is web driver listener and test ng listeners this web driver listener interface allows to implement methods and classes like web driver event listener and even firing web driver whereas talking about test ng listeners test ng can be made to listen to what we say with the help of listeners so this gives us the flexibility to alter the default test ng behavior now what are the different types of listeners in test ng this is also an important question guys there are different types namely i test listener i suit listener i reporter i method interceptor i invoked method listener 1 and 2 i hookable i exception listener i configuration listener i configurable i annotation transformer 1 and 2 one of the most important listener that we'll be using in our project is i test listener okay so this is about the listeners in selenium now let's move on to our next question what are the features of test ng and list some of the functionality in test ng which makes it more efficient test ng is a testing framework based on j unit and n unit in order to simplify a broad range of testing needs starting from unit testing to integration testing and the functionalities which makes it an efficient testing framework are its support for annotation support for data driven testing flexible test configuration and it has the ability to re execute the failed test cases Now what are assert and verify commands in selenium assert command checks whether the given condition is true or false if the condition is true then the program control will execute the next test step but if the condition is false the execution would stop and no further test would be executed and what about verify verify command also checks whether the given condition is true or false irrespective of the condition being true or false the program execution doesn't halt that is if any test fails during verification it would not stop the execution and all the test cases would be executed so this is about assert and verify commands in selenium so the next question i have for you guys is how can you redirect browsing from a browser through proxy selenium provides proxy class in order to redirect from a proxy using this command called string proxy and specifying the proxy address so you can also set the proxy using capability dot set capability and the type of capability that you want to specify and proxy okay the next question that i have for you guys is how can you debug the tests in selenium ide so in order to debug your test cases in selenium ide you need to insert a breakpoint from the location where you want to execute it and then run the test case at the given breakpoint and the execution will be paused So in order to continue with the next step just click on a button called debug then run the commands at the same time and click on the run button so this is how you debug the test cases in selenium ide now let's understand how can you handle network latency in selenium to handle network latency you can use the command driver.manage.pageloadingtime for network latency so this command basically helps in providing you the time load for the page So this also helps in handling the network latency. Moving to the next question I have explain how you can capture server side log in Selenium server. So in order to capture the server side log in Selenium web driver you can go to the command prompt and just type java hyphen jar dot jar and hyphen log selenium dot log. So this command helps in capturing the server side log in Selenium server. Next we have what are regular expressions and how can you use regular expressions in selenium I think most of you didn't know that selenium also uses regular expressions so regular expression is a special text string used for describing a search pattern in selenium ide regular expression can be used with the keyword regex which means it is a regular expression so this regex is used as a prefix to the value and the patterns which needs to be included for the expected values So this is about the regular expressions in uh, Selenium. Does Selenium support database testing? And if so, which API is required? Selenium does not support database testing. Still it can be partially done using the Java database connectivity. So in order to perform database testing in Selenium web driver, you need Java database connectivity, JDBC API. This allows you to execute SQL statements as well. So this is about database testing in Selenium web driver. Now another important question why do you need session handling while working with selenium while working with selenium you need session handling this is because during the test execution 
Selenium has to interact with browser all the time in order to execute the given commands. During execution, it is also possible that before the execution is completed, someone else tries to execute another script in the same machine and in the same type of browser. So in order to avoid such situations, there is a need for session handling in Selenium. Now let's talk about exceptions in Selenium. What is an exception? An exception is an event which occurs during the execution of the program, which is basically an issue which makes the test case stop in the course of the execution. Now, what are the types of exceptions that you've worked on in Selenium WebDriver? This is one of the important questions too, guys. So there are basically five exceptions in Selenium WebDrivers. They are WebDriver exceptions, no alert present exception, no such window exception, no such element exception, and timeout exceptions. Okay. So these are the basic exceptions that will be thrown during the execution of the program. In the course of time, you might come up with another different exception, but these are the major exceptions that Selenium throws. Now coming to the next question we have how can you prepare a customized HTML report using test ng in hybrid framework? I think most of you might not know how to customize the HTML report using test ng. So there are three ways to achieve this. You can either use JUnit with the help of an ant, test ng using an inbuilt default file to get the HTML report. Also you can use the XST reports from the ant, selenium and test ng combinations. You can also use your own customized reports using XSL jar files and you can also convert the XML content to an HTML file. Next we have explain how you can switch between frames. To switch between frames in WebDriver, we use the method called driver.switch2.frame. So this method takes one of the possible arguments that is a number which selects a number by its index, a name or ID. This selects the frame by its name or ID and a previously found web element using the location of the previously located web element in order to select a frame. Another question that you might be asked would be what are the difference between Selenium and QTP? One of the major question that any interviewer would want to know. Why go for Selenium? Why not QTP? So the major features that I'll be comparing them based on would be the browser compatibility, the distribution, application under test, object repository, the language that they support and the vendor support. Now let's compare them based on the browser compatibility. Selenium supports almost all popular browsers like Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera and so on. Whereas QTP supports Internet Explorer, Firefox and Chrome. It only supports Windows based operating system. Talking about the distribution, Selenium is distributed as an open source and freely available tool and QTP is distributed as a licensed tool and is commercialized. And the application to be tested are Selenium supports testing only web based applications, whereas QTP supports testing of both web based as well as Windows based application. Talking about their object repository, Selenium's object repository need to be created as a separate entity, whereas QTP automatically creates and maintains the object repository. The language support. Selenium supports multiple programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, Perl, and so on. Whereas QTP supports only VB script. Talking about the vendor support or the community support, as Selenium is an open source tool, user would not get the vendor support in troubleshooting the issues. Whereas in QTP, users can easily get the vendor support in any case of the issue. So these are the major differences between QTP and Selenium. Moving to the next question, we have what is the difference between set speed and sleep method? Both will delay the speed of the execution, guys. So the thread.sleep command in Java would help to stop or pause the execution for a specific period of time. It takes only a single argument in the integer format, and set speed will pause the execution for a specific amount of time for every Selenium command. So this will delay the execution for a specific amount of time. So this will be in milliseconds guys, whereas thread.sleep will be in nanoseconds. Next I have how can you submit a form using Selenium? You can use the method submit on the element in order to submit a form that is element.submit. Alternatively, you can use the click method on the element which helps in form submission. Another most important question is what are the types of web driver APIs available in Selenium? We have a Firefox driver, Geeko driver, Internet Explorer driver, Chrome driver, 
HTML unit driver, Opera driver, Safari driver, Android, iPhone, and event firing web driver. Among these, which web driver implementation claims to be the fastest? So the fastest implementation of web driver is the HTML unit driver. This is because the HTML unit driver does not execute the test in the browser. So the next question that I have for you is can I navigate back and forth in a browser in Selenium web driver? We can use navigate interface in order to navigate back and forth in a browser. It has methods to move back and forward as well as to refresh the page. The commands are driver.navigate.forward which helps in navigating to the next web page with reference to the browser history. Next we have driver.navigate.back which takes back the previous web page with reference to the browser's history. We have navigate.refresh which helps in refreshing the current web page there by reloading all the web elements. Next we have navigate to and specify the URL which helps in launching the new web browser window and navigates to the specified URL. Now, why do you prefer Selenium automation tool? So this is a must question guys. So why do you need to prefer Selenium automation tool? It is free and open source. It has a vast user base and helping communities cross browser compatibility platform compatibility and multiple programming languages can be used such as Java, Perl, Python, PHP, C sharp and so on. So we've discussed the top 50 Selenium interview questions which are most frequently asked. So that's it from my end guys. If you want to learn more about Selenium web driver, don't forget to take a look at Edureka Selenium playlist. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning.